and a very warm welcome to Wi-Fi Sheep at Christmas for 2023 with me, Tom. Great to have your company. Thank you so much for joining me here on the channel. So what are we doing on the channel for Christmas this year? Well, finally decided to do a bit of a catch up on a couple of projects I've wanted to show you over Christmas for about the last, I think, two years or more now. And every year I get sidetracked or we end up doing something completely different. Well, this year I decided, no, we are gonna do the project I wanted to show you, which is mainly around video games. Something we don't generally cover that much of here on the channel, mainly because, well, I'm not really a gamer, as many of you already know. And also we have so many other things going on normally. Anyway, I wanted to do a couple of projects around the Sony PlayStation, the early Sony Playstations, mainly around the PS2, which is an absolutely fantastic system. So this will be one of maybe two, possibly three videos over the Xmas period, just looking at various things you can still do in 2023 and beyond with an original Sony PlayStation 2. Take a look. So let me show you my Sony PlayStation 2. This is the slightly later slimline version. So you have the originals and then you have these, which were the sort of second generation of the PS2 where they managed to slim the whole console down. And it's really, really nice design and nice form factor. I really do like this console. Now, this isn't new to me. I didn't have a PlayStation or PS2 back in the day. I think the PlayStation 2 came out around year 2000. These, I think, were 2002. So they're about two years into the PlayStation 2's life that these came out. Uh, I picked this one up in a charity shop going relatively cheap and that's the one thing i like about the playstation 2 platform is not only are you able to pick up hardware relatively cheap but you can also get hold of software and i have got hold of a plethora of playstation 2 games very very cheap all out of thrift or charity shop stores that's just a fraction of the stuff i picked up some of it I paid a little bit more for, but it's really, really good games. And the prices do not break the bank and they're great. And plus the fact PlayStation 2 is compatible with PlayStation 1. So you can also pick up PlayStation 1 titles, such as here's a copy of the original Tomb Raider for £1.50. Again, out of a charity shop. And I picked up all sorts of other games I wanted to collect. Myself, Railroad Tycoon is there, etc. Brilliant. The only issue I would say and caution when buying media is that it's disc based media. So obviously you need to check that the discs themselves. This will come out. Are in relative, I say relatively good condition. That one's pretty bashed up, but some of them just look like sandpaper. And others are really, really clean. So luck of the draw. But if you want a, a retro system, as I said in the introduction, if you want a retro system now that has a fantastic and really enjoyable game library, and you can pick up both hardware and software in plentiful supplies very, very cheaply, then PlayStation 2 is definitely something to worth looking at. And that's why I've enjoyed having this system, even though I didn't have one back in the day. And I've only owned a PlayStation for the past sort of five years or so. Before we continue, this is a good opportunity to remind you of the PCB Way Christmas sale with a massive 50% off on PCB Way orders right up until December the 31st. 2023 don't miss out get over to the website right now it's pcbway.com details and links are in the description and if you haven't done so already please do go and make yourself a free pcb way account just click the join now button so let's talk about the console itself now this applies to either the original playstation 2 or this the streamline slim version the PlayStation 2 was a very interesting device coming out in the year 2000. It was a console for the very end of the analog television age. So it assumed at the time that we all had 
standard definition composite and mostly CRT based televisions. We're talking the days before things like USB were standardized. We're talking about the days before HDMI. This is not a HD console. On the front, you'll see that we've got the original PlayStation controller ports. Those didn't change for the PlayStation 2, meaning you could plug in PlayStation 1 controllers as well as run the PlayStation 1 software. These things were fully backward compatible. You've got the original memory card slots for plugging in PS1 and in my case, PlayStation 2 memory cards, which you can still buy new memory cards for the PlayStation platform. PS2 did introduce USB, but it's for very limited purposes, which we'll talk about some other time. And you also had infrared. There was a remote for the system originally. Also, you might not know this, but the, the PlayStation badge actually rotates, depending on if you have the stand and could mount the thing upright like that, or you lie it flat like this. Now, for a lot of people, the PlayStation 2 was their very first DVD player. That was one of the features. It could play DVD discs, full-size optical discs, not like things like the GameCube that used the mini disc format at the time. So for me, no, it wasn't my first DVD player, but for many people, this was the first device that you could actually play DVD video on. So it had a dual purpose function. It also was able, if you look on the back, to plug in to the internet. It was one of the very first consoles that had internet connectivity. We also had Sony's non-standard optical AV out. Oh, sorry, op digital optical out and AV audio video out. And we've got the power supply. Now, a word of uh, note, really, is unlike many reviews for these products, which are normally from Americans in North America, showing you the North American NTSC versions, this is not, this is a PAL European British version of the Sony PlayStation 2. There are a couple of things that are different and we'll come into those as we get through the video. Now, I mentioned that this was a analog console, if you like. It was a console built for the uh, end of the analog television age. First thing we'll do, let's just plug it in. So mine did actually come with the original power brick supply which works fine so it's now powered up and you see you've got a red light on the power button there the cable that came with it which i have here is the same as the playstation one so it's a av system so composite and audio left right and sony's own plug type standard there now this does work fine. I can plug that into there. And that would normally go into the AV sockets on your TV. Now, what's the options for modern day? As increasingly, television and display systems don't have analog AV jacks anymore. Well, if I want to show you on screen, for example, I'm going to need to tap in via HDMI capture card. Now, technically, there's two ways to do this. We can either upscale from this, which is actually the way we're going to have to do it, or you can now buy, and I did buy one, a PS2 to HDMI upscaler, which actually works surprisingly well, apart from one slight issue, which is for some reason right now, this device is not working properly with my capture card or the TV monitor which is extremely annoying. So unfortunately, I can't show you it right now, but if I figure it out, we will do a follow-up video. But basically, it's an upscale option, which you can plug in the device into the back, and then you plug a HDMI into the other side. You've got a separate audio out as well, and you can actually upscale to HDMI. These cards, you do have to set the video standard from RGB, which is standard, to YCM something, something, something. Um, there's a different video setting. If you don't set it, they don't work at all. I have done that. So before you start screaming in the comments, I have done that. It does show a picture on my TV, but it won't show a capture card. I think that's something to do with this generic device probably being designed for American and Japanese NTSC devices 
not running properly with a PAL European system, which is a problem I come up with over and over again when buying third party modern add ons for retro gaming systems. Anyway, really wish I could have shown you that properly, but I can't in this video, so we'll pop that out of the way for now. And we'll talk about what we are going to try and do. So, back to that original cable, which is here. Let's plug that in. Okay. How are we going to get that into HDMI? And here is the HDMI cable. There's the cable, the capture card. How are we going to do that? Well, I do have one of these very generic splitter boxes which basically, or converters rather, AV to HDMI. Basically, you can plug in composite video this side. And these, by the way, are dual standard. They accept PAL and NTSC. You can set what you want. So in this case, it's actually shoved over to 1080p. I'm going to set that to 720 because that's the frame rate or the resolution, sorry, that we are recording at for this video. I've now got HDMI, which I'm going to plug in that side. And finally, we do need to add a little bit of power, which is five volts from USB. So I've got a, uh, a USB sort of power bank plugged into the mains just off camera. Here is a, the end of the a USB cable. So plug that in, that now powers that up as a converter. A word of warning, this doesn't improve the picture. It just upscales whatever signal is sent in. So if it's a fuzzy, you know, picture of this then, it's just gonna upscale into a sort of high definition fuzzy picture. It's not going to add any quality into the image as you'll see, but let's see if that now works. So you can already see it's seeing the no signal from the uh, adapter box or converter box. I'm going to turn on the console now. Let's see if it boots. There we go. It's also worth noting that the console, as in the PS2, runs in the default 4-3 square television aspect ratio mode. It does have a sort of option it calls it for 16 by 9 widescreen, but all it does is it just letterboxes the top and the bottom of the screen. Uh, it's not a true widescreen format. So if you're watching this, you're going to see black bars either side. Now I've just realised I'm going to need to plug a controller in, otherwise we're not going to get very far. So I do have the black Again, I think it's a bit dusty. It's been uh, been in storage for a little while, but I do have one of the original black controllers. You could use one of the uh, beige grey PS1 controllers. Pretty much work the same. So pop that in. And you've got a separate button there for analog control for the sticks. Okay. So the image you can see is soft you can also notice that the clock has stopped working which means the battery backup in this isn't working i'm not sure if it's a separate battery or if it's just a supply inside uh, a chip or something i'm not sure so you can see how it's defaulted to the first of the first 2000 now this is what i was talking about a component video and you see how it says ycb pb cr p pr um that's basically the setting you need for that upscaler to work. We'll just run in RGB because we're running through uh, composite. So we'll head back and technically there shouldn't be any files on the system. No, there's no data. So we'll head back again. This sort of operating system with the sort of ocean sounds uh, was quite revolutionary for the time. But let's what's the version history running here. There we go. If anyone's interested, the console, browser, CD, DVD player, system MAC address, version 1.11 of the driver. I'm not quite sure what any of that does. Oh, interesting. Smooth. Disk speed. I might leave disk speed as it is. Interesting. 
And there you could do that. But yeah, you basically just have these two options on the default system without any software and can plug in. Anyway, let's plug my card in. Just pop it into the first slot there. And let's see if we can browse data now. And there's a card, you hit to enter card. So yeah, there's a few games I've been playing. So it's very much a case of what do we want to play? What do we want to look at? So many good choices. What about Toka Race Driver 3? And all these have still got the original receipt in. So I paid... Well, I think I, I paid 50p then in 2017. There we are. So I must have bought it and something else for 50 pence, which is kind of what I'm getting at with um, why this stuff is so worth collecting if it's in good condition. And a nice thing about the thrift stores and the uh, etc. is that you can actually look at the discs yourself normally so if they're in bad condition you can go ah no thanks whereas buying online if you buy blind uh, it's well you get it. you'll you'll you know what i mean you don't know if the disc is scratched up or not and sometimes the listings aren't massively reliable put it that way Again, it was a, a Codemasters product. I mean, it's not bad for the time, and also, you know, the mix, the mix genre of racing, especially for European seasons. It does North America as well. I mean, this was a fantastic game for the time. It still is now, in it, honestly. Yeah, it's like, you'd buy multiple different video games just for this series. So yeah, it's it's really out there, and it had network right. And we're off. Ooh. I have to be honest with it's one of my favourite genres of gaming is is race simulation. Um, I don't tend to stream it because uh, one, I'm not very good. And two, with the latest Codemaster game, especially the F1s, with the um, almost like the sort of stabilising wheels, the, uh, the tracks on the, on the ooh, God. tracks on the ground. <laughs> Not tracks, you know, the the arrows on the ground that tell you when to just break into corners and things. And uh, yeah, and I think I can't be streaming with kind of like the sort of you know novice assistant stuff on people don't want to pe see people do that so that's kind of why why i did oh that was a bit much that was a bit much just use the other car to brake Throwing it around the corners a bit here. Okay. Yeah, it's not bad for PlayStation 2, considering how old the architecture is.
okay. You see what I mean about this system being enjoyable? <laughs> oh, I could have ended badly. Too much of the uh, curb there. Okay. Oh God! Nowhere to go. Nowhere to go. Right in my breaking spot there, nowhere to go. Oh, I've cut the corner. I've cut the corner. That was a mess. Yeah, that was a mess. I'm probably breaking a little bit too early, but... Oh, what? Racing incident. I'm in cautions now. So. Right, here we go. I seem to have slightly lost momentum. We also appear to be picking up the uh, the back of the original pack. Let's try to there we go. That's better. Right, break, 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 break. Now, it very much depends, are they going to get out of the way for me? Ooh. Again, no way to sort of go without uh, slamming into the back of somebody. Okay. That's bad. That's bad. Ah, and you lose places. By the way, these controllers, as you probably already know with PlayStation, have rumble shock kind of feedback. Which at the time wasn't standardised with video game systems. So it's still quite a new feature. Ah, oh, what? Now I've been given a penalty. Twenty. Because what? That's not fair. I'm struggling here. Thank you. No disaster. So it's probably going to put me plumb last. Yes, it's just messing up these corners that's the problem.
but the actual physics you can feel the weight of the car sort of being thrown over to one side as you kind of bank into corners too quick I've forgotten actually how good this game is so there we go oh how much of a disaster was that but what about PlayStation 1 well we'll take out Fucker Racing. And let's try the original Tomb Raider from 1996. By the way, you probably remember the original, and that disc isn't amazing either, the original PlayStation discs had this black underlay as opposed to got a more common blue or silver. Right, let's power back up. There's an iconic opening for you. So it reads it as an original PlayStation game. It gives you the original PlayStation boot. Oh, core design. Oh, God, do you remember this? Yeah, the original screens. It's very dark, isn't it? Yeah, contrast. Is that the original training? Let's have a look. Ah, oh, the original mansion, yeah. Oh, these these pre renders look so kind of janky and old blind, look at that. I'll take you on a guided tour. Oh, and of course, uh, the original game didn't make use of the analog uh, joysticks. So Tomb Raider actually controlled with the buttons because it didn't assume you had... Uh, the original PlayStation controllers didn't have the two analog joysticks. It was literally just like that. So that makes controlling a whole lot more difficult. Also, the famous... PlayStation 1 texture wobble. So look at how the textures sort of wobble around. And I forget exactly what that was about. There was something to do with the way the screen blitter on PS1 worked. To save money. That is so slow. To save money. They, um... Let's do some tumbling. Press the jump button. Is that like a giant crash mat or something? To save money, they didn't they didn't put something in it does like pixel mathematical oh, pixel hey, correction or so. Hey, I'd have to look it up. I'm making it up on the spot now. But there was something not on the uh, PlayStation One that meant that texture maps had a tendency to. God, this this gameplay is so. It feels so slow as well to get anywhere. How do I jump? There we go. Like it takes an eternity to get over here. <laughs> yeah, not sure what I'm doing. But to be honest with you, one of the best ways to run this kind of vintage video games is actually to get the console versions as opposed to the PC or uh, you know Mac desktop type versions because those computers come and go. But consoles generally live on a bit longer and it gives you a platform to play this stuff on as we are now. And yeah, I mean, the upscale works. It's not amazing, but... We are dealing with technology that's scarily over... Is it over 25 years old now? How do I... Nope. Oh, there we go. Hmm. 
not used to the controls on this at all. It's not it's not very intuitive. I guess you get used to it, but it's not No. Oh there we go. X. X the climb. Go on. So there we go then. A little bit of fun. I have to say, really did enjoy that. Now, if you haven't done so already, please do consider liking and subscribing to me right here on Wi-Fi Sheep. Also, check out these dates and times for live streams over the Christmas and New Year period right here on the channel. If you're seeing this ahead of time, I really hope you can join me for one of the live streams. I'll be streaming on both Christmas Eve and New Year's Eve. If you want to support me and help fund Wi-Fi Sheep, you can by joining us on Patreon. It's patreon.com forward slash Wi-Fi Sheep. Or alternatively, you can become a YouTube channel member. Prices start from 99 pence and that'll be converted into your local currency or appear in US dollars wherever you happen to be in the world. And we must say a huge thank you and shout out to all these brilliant people. These are the channel members and patrons that continue to support me and have been supporting me throughout the year here on Wi-Fi Sheep. If I don't see you again, then may I wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year for 2024. And I do hope to see you real soon right here on the channel. Until next time, thank you so much for your company and bye for now.